big formula. You know, I think it's, uh, that's why relationships are so important is um, that allows you to get real feedback from uh, the pulse of the team and from individuals. But uh, we've really just tried to, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm actually really incredibly optimistic. We've been through a ton of adversity here in the in the recent uh, three weeks to a month. And, uh, you know, I think we've really given, this week has given us a chance to recommit to some things, uh, to rally together uh, uh, mentally and emotionally. Um, but I think the bottom line, uh, honestly, is that um, it, this is really about, this is where you really lean into all the relational work that we do on a daily basis. Um, so that there's trust built so you can get real feedback in real time. Gotcha. And so I just want to throw the same question out to uh, uh, Kiki and um, Charisma. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a long season, but I think we know that coming in and we know that, um, you know, we're going to have to like weather the storm start the season. And I think this week has been uh, a really good week and opportunity for us to like go back to what did we commit to at the beginning of the year? Why are we doing this? Um, and um, kind of go back to why we love to play with each other and um, for this school. So I think we've done a really good job of like refocusing this week and I know we're going to carry that over. Thanks. Same charisma. Yeah, I said it all. <laughs> thank, thank you all. Uh, I think uh, I see Haley. Go ahead, Haley. Hello, thanks for being here. Um, so last I read, I think Lauren is day to day just checking in to see if you have any updates on her or a potential timetable. Yeah, they're really, and I'm really not playing a media, you know, holding back kind of thing. It's just truly is that is exactly what it is, is day to day. So uh, I really don't know the answer to that in terms of a timetable, um, but she is day to day. Okay, thanks. And then you've worked with short benches before and gotten a lot out of them. So, um, Corey, just can you share some of the secret of like the success there and for the players, what's it like um, just fulfilling an increased role when you know that players are going to be out like that? Well, I really believe that um, with the amount of TV timeouts that there are and that the fatigue factor is actually mostly mental. We have a great strength and conditioning coach and uh, in Coach Stuart Hart, and you know we, these players are hard workers. Um, I honestly think we had to get past the mental and emotional fatigue more so than anything else. Um, we just got to put together. Um, you know, we played our hardest basketball on Sunday in the last three minutes. I mean, when you should be technically the most fatigued. And, uh, you know, I really think it's about what's in between our ears and how big our hearts are more than anything else. That's really the secret to our success is our commitment to each other and how how much we want it, honestly. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that, um, you know, we'll have to be strategic on matchups and respond, especially against a team like Arizona, who presses a lot, traps a lot. Um, you know, we're going to have to rotate people through. We're going to have to be very deliberate of what we're trying to accomplish. But I think clarity in the game plan and just having a real connected spirit, that overcomes a lot in terms of a short bench. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I think we just have to, like, as players, um, just be willing to step up and um, do whatever is needed for the team, whatever it takes. They can play 40 minutes. I'm not worried. Uh, Lauren, how about you? Awesome. Thanks again for being here and holding this uh, media availability. Um, I was wondering, uh, Lauren has kind of mentioned what the mind gym looks like for you all um, in your program. Could you speak to this past um, preparation and looking towards Friday too, since Stanford, what the mind gym has entailed for your team? Well, honestly, uh, we didn't have the mind gym on Monday. We actually have it tomorrow. But I think in general, it's about uh, our refocus routines. Like what are we, what's getting in our way? You know, like I think that all of us, we are capable, we are talented, we are um, hardworking, but what were the things that kept us from being less than our best? And one of the things that we talk about in the mind gym is that um, sometimes it's not about anything other than removing the interferences. And so in the mind gym, identifying what each, for each person and even each coach, what, what is keeping me from being the best coach for them and, and each person being willing to do that. So we really believe that um, the work begins before it begins, meaning all this week, making sure that our thoughts are thinking about the right things. And, um, you know, I think that's a constant battle in life, let alone in basketball games, is to, to try to get yourself back to neutral and present focused. 
And, you know, I think the reality is of the fears of what could happen in the future and the disappointment of what's happened in the past, I think affected a lot of us in the last couple of weeks. There's been some ups and downs in that. So refocusing what it looks like to be mentally present and what does it take to, what do you have to remove from your interferences in order to be present focused? And a lot easier to talk about than to do, but that's really when the focus of our mental training uh, up to this point. Awesome. And just one more quick one. Um, have you guys practiced with like a smaller four guard rotation? Do you intend to implement that um, this weekend against the Arizona teams um, along a similar vein? I know Gabrielle Hawkins is kind of really versatile guard tendencies, but is listed as a forward. If that's going to play into it, your decision yeah, as well. Cam's going to play every position on the floor and um, Gabs is going to play both at the wing and at the four spot. And sometimes we'll play double big as well. So that's, when you only have seven or eight players, mm -hmm. the reality is, is that um, you got to be willing to play a lot of different ways. And it'll be a little bit dependent upon the lineups of Arizona and mm -hmm. Arizona State both. Um, but, you know, I think that's right now, uh, that's the one thing that's really great about our team is that we have a Gabs and a Cam who can play so many different positions. Uh, and we also have the ability to go double big and our players, some players are getting some experience and understanding what it takes at a higher level. And I think with each week, they're going to be more prepared. Uh, Christine Walla and Amanda Muse, they're going to be much more prepared uh, for what's required at this level. Awesome. Thanks so much. Gavin, go for it. Yeah, uh, you kind of talked a little bit, and, and thanks, of course, for doing this. Uh, you just mentioned Amanda and Christine. I'm curious what you've seen specifically from Christine and her growth. I remember last year at times you saying she she's someone that down the line was going to play a huge role for your program, and now obviously she has a big opportunity. So what have you seen from Christine specifically and and how what you'll need from her this, this weekend? I actually think offensively, she's really, I mean, she's become one of our uh, best pick and pocket pass players, and she rolls to the rim, uh, one of uh, Charisma's favorite targets in the two-player game um, off of that. So I really like the progress that she's making offensively. Um, she's understanding what's required. She needs to seal a little bit more aggressively to create some easier opportunities on the catch. Um, a little more aggression, but I, I like her progress that way. I think the the place I'm really challenging her on is her deep, uh, her post defense and ball screen defense. And that's when, for her to walk into the opportunity at the highest level, that's where we need to see the biggest jump from her. And I know that's what she wants as well. Um, but that's, that's her challenge in this increased role is being able to really execute what we need on the defensive end of the floor, both in post defense and the kind of catches we're allowing, as well as ball screen defense. And then for, for you know, going off that with Amanda, kind of thrusted into a, a tough situation, just having to play a lot of minutes against Stanford. And um, I guess how she responded to that and, and how do you sort of see her playing a role this weekend as well? Yeah, I think the, the positive is I think she's really – uh, one of our best offensive rebounders. Like she gets an offensive rebound per minute at a very, very high rate. And that's something we've been lacking, honestly. And so if she can get us some extra possessions, I think that's really key. She's also understanding what it looks like. We run a lot of what they call gets and um, she's understanding how to create those and the spacing that's needed on the offensive end. But she similarly, um, the physicality on defense has been her challenge, right? And the speed of everything, how she, the decision-making at such high speeds and such high rates of physicality. That's where we need her to continue to move forward. Uh, how about Sue? Hi there. Thank you guys for taking time after practice today. Um, one for Charisma and one for Kiki. Charisma, I just have to think about your last <clears throat> four years of so much adversity so I mean hey you guys have maybe a mid-season you know it's mid-season and it's time to dig in what are some ways that you're inspiring your team to keep persevering through challenges right now because you've probably seen more than most people yeah I think at least for me like the biggest thing is just trying to stay present um it's so easy to try to look into the future and try <clears throat> to guess like what's going to happen but just staying present and um, sticking to the process like you, you're not going to win a national championship right now in this moment so just sticking to that process and doing whatever we need to do so that we can be ready in March and then Kiki you're you're so even keeled all the time um do you focus on rankings or what exactly are what is your focus right now at this point in the season 
No, I definitely not focused on rankings right now. I think like Charisma said, like just focus on um getting better today and like okay, how can we be more prepared for our games this weekend and, and get better in practice? It's not um, I don't think any of us are really focused on the rankings right now. And, and regardless, throughout the entire season, yeah, that hasn't been our main focus. It's just been about uh, getting better and, and um, preparing ourselves for, uh, you know, what, what we need to be prepared for. And then I guess one last one for Coach. Um, obviously, you don't focus on the rankings, and you've had plenty of adversity yourself. Um, how do you motivate – how do you motivate your team at the, at the midpoint of the season versus, you know, at any other time of the season? Well, I think our current, uh, you know, just adversity is is made that, you know, hyper focused on process. We told him after the Stanford loss that um, the loss to Stanford won't kill us. I mean, Iowa had six losses going into the final four, last year, you know, but the response to our lack of uh, effort and fight. I um, mean, th- we are a hardworking team. That was very uncharacteristic of us, but we better figure out real fast what led to that. That could kill us. And, but I was very confident that they would be willing to self-evaluate and come back and respond to that. But, you know, I think the worst thing you can do is focus on anything outside your control. All that does is slow down the process of why did we, why did we play that way? Why did we um, show up with that kind of, uh, you sort of defeatist attitude and, you know, lack of effort and fight. And that, that, that's, if you are focusing on rankings, um, you know, placement, uh, what's in the future, it is going to absolutely kill your growth this time of year. And, uh, you know, I just think that we have to really narrow that focus. And, um, but honestly, the adversity has made that really easy because, uh, you know, the only thing you can do to affect what you want in the future is to have a great day today. And that's cliche, but I, it truly is the pivotal choice that we have to make. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Sabrina, go for it. Hey guys, just to echo everyone, thank you. Um, for Kiki and Charisma, you guys uh, have seemed to have a lot of like individual stretches where you guys really aggressively hunt your own offense in these recent games. And I'm curious, like, what can you do to sort of make that a tandem? Like, how does the your turn, my turn thing turn into we're both aggressive all of the time? Great question. I'd like to hear the answer to that too. <clears throat> that is a great question. <laughs> um, I think that's what we're trying to figure out quite quite candidly, right? You know, and that's my job as a coach is to try to create a little more vision. They haven't had their film sessions with us yet, but that will be my focus with them is showing the opportunities when they weren't hunters and showing them how to go about doing that in a more consistent basis. But I mean, Sabrina, credit to you um, for, for noticing that, but I think that I've loved seeing that and we've has sort of been thrown into that because of some of our changes that we've had to adapt to, but they are perfectly capable of doing that on a really, really consistent basis. And I don't care when Lauren comes back, it's not going to change that I want them to do that all the time. And so that's going to really be a big commitment, but do you have anything else to add? Mm. <laughs> no, I mean, I would agree. I think like with Lauren so far before it's been like, we haven't had as many opportunities to like, both Chris and I have to like figure out or we haven't had to I feel like figure out how to do it as much but now um over uh these past few games and however long we need to I think it's just going to be about like playing off each other and making it easier for each other rather than just like feeling like we have to like take turns and stuff and then Corey just one quick thing on Lena um did she not play on Sunday because of getting ready for the Olympics or was that a separate situation yeah she went um two days earlier the different right. national teams just played uh, handled it differently with us and so um she uh left two days earlier than Angela did for but they were both national national team related gotcha so you're not a, like no injury no injuries yeah no nope. all right thank you Anyone, who else do we have there? Oh, Howard, look at that. Go for it, Howard. Hi, Corey, Charisma, Kiki, good to see you all. Um, Charisma, I I have one for you that is a bit of a jumping off from Sabrina's uh, excellent question. I will just reiterate that. Um, Your shot, and we talked about this last year, is something you worked so hard at over the summer, getting here into 23, 24. You're not just more efficient uh, from beyond the arc, but also at the mid-range. And I guess I wonder whether uh, you feel as if 
Uh, you've now had enough games under your belt where it feels like, all right, this is real. This improvement is legitimate. Yeah, I think um, I work on it a lot in practice and outside of practice as well. So I feel really confident getting there. And because uh, Corey's always talking to both me and Kiki about being ready to shoot right there. And um, yeah, I feel really confident shooting those shots. For you both, obviously, and Kiki also, you know, you continue to be an elite scorer. The center of gravity is different with Lauren out. And I just, I wonder how much harder you felt it has been to hunt and find your shots during this period of time. Uh, Both of you guys. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I definitely, Lauren definitely draws a lot of attention in, in the post. So it, I think everyone on the perimeter probably gets like another one, one or two, a few more like easy looks, you know, uh, less guarded, less um, contested. Um, but I mean, we work on it every day, regardless of like uh, if we're being guarded out there, we know like just to get to our spots and, and where we're best at. But it definitely, when being out, uh, it just creates a little bit more pressure on, and sometimes creating your own shot. Yeah. You know, and, and to add, like um, also just more people are stepping up. So just like being able to figure out like, okay, what works with me and Christine versus like that's going to look different than what works with me and Lauren. So just figuring that out. And, and Corey, I, you know, to kind of dovetail with that, um, I, I know you said over the weekend you expect Lauren back this season, but it's a day-to-day -day situation. I know that's obviously the most complicated thing for you as a coach, right, to be able to figure out when and how, what are your points of emphasis. So man, maybe you've answered this from the previous question, but figuring out how much time you're spending with Kiki and Charisma as your one and two offensive option, changing the way you think about lineups. Are you thinking of it in those ways? Because you are obviously three weeks from March, or is it still just, all right, it's day to day and we're treating this like we're resuming the way we operated before Lauren went out. Yeah, no, I think, I think, um, I think we, uh, my hope is that come March, this will end up being a blessing in disguise um, because I, I don't think we're going to be able to just rely on Lauren and, and be able to hope for that one or two looks that Kiki, you just referred to. Um, I think we need to be people that in a March for what we want to get accomplished, that we need Lauren back and we need them to hunt for their shots that they're really good at. We need them to be aggressive all the time. And, uh, and I, I, I've been talking to them beforehand, before Lauren was out, that they were passing up shots and they needed to be more aggressive. They need to be bigger hunters. Um, and but that's they already have the skill set there. And the reason the thing I'm really challenging like Kiki on is urgency on defense, because that's the one, to be honest with you, without Lauren, that I think has exposed us more is the work that everybody else has to do that she's not going to be behind us covering for. And so um, I think it's forcing us to be better one on one defenders and to be more communicative and much more aggressive um, further away from the basket to cover for what we might not have behind the basket right now. Um, but offensively, I do not want that to change. I want to add back that. And I'm sure there'll be some synergy and some blending that needs to take place so that we can get both those things. But when Lauren comes back, I don't want to lose the aggressiveness that they've been forced to develop confidence in. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you guys for your time and for you guys coming. It means a lot to us too. Thank you.